Hello everyone, I'm Chong Geng from Boston University. Today, I will talk about our work AWBGCN, a graph convolutional network accelerator with runtime work rebalancing. This work is done under collaboration among Boston University, PNNL, Microsoft, CJU, and the University of Hong Kong. Everyone knows that DNN has changed the world. In the old days, researchers were working on half-circle detection, edge detection for many years. However, in the past decade, with the help of DNNs, we start to work on much more fancy tasks. For example, we have already made the cars drive themselves now. And DNNs have already beaten human beings in many fields, especially computer vision. Here are two pictures which bring me a lot of fun. I'm not sure how many seconds it takes you to figure out which one is dog and which one is fried chicken or bagel, but it really takes me more than one second. However, with CNS, it only takes probably, let's say, less than one millisecond. CN and RN are great and useful, but they have their own limitation. They can only work on structured data, such as the brick wall, but what if we use them to work on the piles of bricks and rubbles, which are unstructured. In the real world, there are many applications using unstructured data. For example, in the big data field, we have advertisement system, recommendation system, data mining, and power grid. Also, embedded applications can also use unstructured data, for example, 3D model. Researchers invented many NN-based approaches to help us analyze the latent information of unstructured data. And GCN is one of the most famous. Like CNN and RNN, the acceleration of GCN is very important. For example, power grid cascading failure prediction requires much faster than real-time inference to find the failure and avoid it, which is very important for daily life. And every Black Friday, we witness that that's why websites crashes for a couple of hours, which means that probably they may need a better accelerator to help them to do the advertisement and recommendation with higher throughput. GCN has very similar computational structure with sparse CNN. It also based on consecutive SPM or SPJAM. As you can see in the equation, there are at least three metrics getting involved in the computation of a graph count layer. For example, the weight matrix is small, but dense. The feature matrix is generally uh, sparse, big, but narrow. And the adjacency matrix of a graph is always ultra sparse and normally very huge. These characteristics of the matrix in GCN make it very difficult to accelerate comparing to ASEAN and makes the ASEAN accelerator not efficient enough. So there are three major characteristics I have to talk about. Uh, first, um, the matrices of GCN, especially the adjacency matrix, can have highly unbalanced non zero distribution. The distribution can follow power law, as shown in this figure. non zero can be originally clustered. Most soft rows are almost but not totally empty, with non-zeros at random position. Some rows can, however, be very dense, dominating the entire calculation process. We call these rows evil rows in our paper and in this talk. This may cause workload imbalance and resulting in low utilization of the overall system. And the second is, the metrics can be very, very sparse, which makes it extremely challenging to identify and access enough valid pairs to fit massive PEs. Assuming that we have a large system, for example, 4K PE, and we want to forward valid pairs of non-zeros to them every cycle and keep them busy. And let's say that if the density is one tenth, it's easy and doable. But what if the density is 1,000 times slower? Um, how many pairs we need to check to find 4K valid pairs at each cycle. It is almost not realistic to be implemented in the modern circuit design. And third, the matrix is very large, and the space of matrix compression or optimization is relatively limited comparing to SCN. 
so that we have to use op option memory, making the whole, the entire system more complex. And in contrast, uh, in SCN, there are tons of ways to compress them and make them roughly fit on chip. So therefore, we decided to design a new architecture for us, as well as a graph convolutional network. And the first step is to decide the execution order of the executive matrix multiplication. There are two choices, and we decided to adopt the second choice for two reasons. First, due to the special shapes of the matrices in GCN, uh, the second one requires less number of operations, which is great and important in acceleration. And second, using this order, both matrix multiplication becomes sparse dense matrix multiplication, which means that we only need to design one kernel, one architecture, then it can work for all the kernels in GCN. Um, we first designed a baseline architecture for Power Law SDMM, and this design solves most of the problem except the workload rebalancing problem. And uh, we use column wise product in our design, which means that the alt matrix is calculated by column. There are three benefits. First, it is easy to overlap consecutive SDM kernels with fine grained pipelining so that the on-chip storage and off-chip communication demand can be reduced significantly. And second, using common vice product, the off-chip memory access for all matrices are always with continuous addresses resulting in higher bandwidth utilization. And third, it is easy to identify valid pairs and access them. No need to have very huge multiplexers to access the valid pairs. And for initial workload RAM mapping, um, we use static uh, mapping based on the row ID, which means that each P will work on several certain rows, and it will make the result aggregation or let's say reduction easier. Here is our based on architecture design. And data are forwarded to the task distributor model, and then are forwarded to the PEs for processing, and intermediate results are stored in the accumulation buffer. And there are two types of types of task distributor and PO, which we call TDQ in our paper. And uh, one is for the sparse matrix, uh, which sparse is smaller than 50, uh, 75 percent, and stored in dense format. This architecture is very close to the one we used in the MD simulation that published in the Supercomputing Conference 2019. And if you are interested, in, please uh, have a look. And the other one is for very sparse metrics with a store in the CLC matrix. This CDQ is equipped with an Omega network to forward the valid pairs coming in a random, a random order to the correct PEs. And this design is efficient, but has one big problem left to solve. The PEs may suffer from serious imbalanced workload distribution. And as you can see in the utilization weight figure here, most of the PE have ultra low utilization. And it is easy to observe that if you want to have a 100% and flatten utilization wave, you need to get rid of the local wave fluctuation and minor crest here and the major crest here. So to achieve this, we propose AWB GCN architecture with runtime workload auto tuning. There are three sub techniques in our auto tuning design. Workload distribution smoothing is for getting rid of the local fluctuation. Remote switching is for minor crust, and evil row remapping is for the major crust. Each round of auto tuning includes two phases. In the first phase, data processing and distribution smoothing are performed. And in the, in the second phase, remote switching and row remapping will be activated. Let's see this figure. The gray bars at the top show the execution time of parallel PEs. The length changes dynamically through the process. And figure one, figure A, gives estimated execution time without distribution smoothing. When the processing of the first iteration starts, or let's say, um, when phase one of the first iteration starts, the PEs keep offloading workload to their last bidder neighbor, uh, resulting in a more flat and smooth execution time wave as shown in figure B. Meanwhile, during the processing, the system will actually, is one module of the system called AutoTuner, will find which PE are at the wave crests and throws and which PE 
has evil role. And after all the pieces have finished their work, phase two starts. The auto-tuner will first partition the workload of the evil row to PEs at the lowest throws and then switches workloads of the PEs at the minor crest with the ones at the minor throws. The green and blue arrows in the figure B shows the evil row remapping and remote switching decisions, respectively. After these decisions are made, the second round of tuning starts. Here, the figure C and D shows the second round. And with remote switching and row remapping determined in the first round, the initial workload distribution among PEs at the start of the second round can be more efficiently balanced by distribution smoothing. And the resulting waveform is shown in figure D, as you can see, is already gets uh, much more flat. And note that the blue arrow in figure D also shows for remote balancing techniques not only finds new pairs of PEs to switch workload at every iteration, but also adjusts the switch fractions determined in the previous rounds. And using all these techniques, the system utilization can be lifted significantly and the optimal distribution strategy can be found fastly. This picture shows the architecture of our auto-tuning design. And as you can see, comparing to the baseline architecture, the last layer of the Omega network is equipped with some extra wires for task sharing among neighbors. And we also need to add some comparators to find out which neighbor is less busier. And all these are for uh, distribution smoothing. And the pink module is the uh, auto tuner who is in charge of looking for PE with evil row and P tuple for workload switching. And it will also calculate and decide the switch fraction. And this module is for our, our remote switching and evil remap. And uh, you can also see that the P array also becomes different from the baseline architecture. It becomes heterogeneous. Several P's get bigger. The blue one is the master P used to find the evil row ID and it will inform the auto tuner who is the evil row. And then the auto tuner will map the evil row back to the red PEs and make the red PEs can work on the evil row tasks distributively. And we evaluate for results on Intel FPJ Stratix 10 with five widely used data sets. And in this figure, design D is the full version AWGCN, and the baseline is the one without rebalancing technique. The first figure shows that the system utilization uh, always, is always high with our full version design. Um, it, for, at least for these five data sets, uh, the utilization can reach over 90%. And the two figures at the bottom shows the hardware overhead. A is the logic circuits overhead for the rebalancing techniques. And as you can see, um, the overhead is always like smaller than 10%. And the figure B shows the on-chain memory demand. Uh, with the rebalancing techniques, the demand is even reduced. Uh, this is because the more balanced the workload distribution decreases the probability of back pressure and congestion as the Omega network. So that the required task queue can get smaller. And we also investigate how fast the system can find the satisfied distribution strategy and how or design scales. The results show that it only takes, let's say, 10 cycles to find a good distribution, which is fast enough for us for GCN. And our design scales much better than baseline design. As you can see, using the baseline design, we have that's a 4K PE, the utilization is very low, and the utilization line drops very fastly. And however, using our version design, the utilization also drops, but very slow. We also compare our FPJ rollout to the high-end CPU GPU GCN implementation, which is based on PyTorch geometric. And as you can see, uh, we get a very great and significant speed up comparing to the uh, E5 CPU and the RTX 8000 GPU. And if you are interested in your work, welcome to my presentation at Micro 53. Thank you.